KSMQ Television in Austin, this is On Cue, connecting interesting issues and interesting people. On Cue. A Litter Bit Better is a campaign that started with just two concerned citizens back in 2006. It has blossomed into a community-wide effort, and Megan Moeller is here to tell us more. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. And uh, tell us a little bit about the program. It's been a big success. It really has. A Little Bit Better is going into its ninth year, and as you said, it started off with two concerned citizens that went to the mayor of, you know, how do we do something about the trash in our community? And since it's grown every year, and now we have over 3,000 people that participate each year, and we remove tens of tons of trash every year. In the eight years of the program, 95 tons of trash has been removed from Rochester's landscape. I was looking at some of those figures, the massive amounts of, of garbage that's been picked up. Is this sort of like when you're driving on the highway, you see adopt a highway groups? It, it's not organized like that, really, is it, in the city? It is, it is not organized like that. While we do have encourage Adopt-A-Highway and Adopt-A-Stream, Adopt-A-Park groups to get out during a little bit better to pick up, um, it is not organized like that. This is run through Our Neighbors, which is a nonprofit community resource center that brings together a number of organizations within Rochester that provide in-kind services to put on this community-wide event. So there are dozens of sponsors that help make this event possible. And it's a finite, it's a date. It goes from? It goes from, this year it's April, I gotta cheat, make sure I get the That's right one. Okay. April 18th through the 25th. And so it's a week-long event and groups can pick a time and pick a place and pick it up. So you can find a time that works for your group. If it's during the workday, if your, your business wants to get out and participate, if it's after school, if it's on the weekend, doesn't matter to us, we provide the trash bags. So you can go pick those up, go out to your claimed location, gather the trash, you leave it in a pile in the a little bit better bags, and then we come and pick it up and dispose of it for you. So it's, uh, you work with businesses and or service groups Kiwanis, Lions, those types exactly. of organizations. And so they, how this works, help me explain, maybe other communities sure. will want to learn about it. So the those organizations contact your office or we have an online sign-up that okay. has a map of different parcels, if you will, around the city that are available, their, their public lands um, that are available to be adopted for the event. You can pick them up. So people go online, they say, I want section 235, and then we send off the information they need, and they let us know when they're thinking about picking it up. We have bags distributed at quick trips around Rochester, so people go and pick up the bags that they want and we'll use, pick up the trash, leave it in a pile at that site, and then call us, and we organize somebody to come pick up that trash and dispose of it for that group. And it's stay away from broken glass and, th I mean. You know, be wise about that, yeah. careful of, of certain types of, of waste that you might come across. Luckily, we haven't heard too many stories about that. It's mostly food packaging and cigarette butts and, pop bottles and plastic bags from grocery stores are some of the biggest things we find, though there's often some very odd, amusing things that are found. I think there was, last year there was like a red onion that had a little hat put on it and little <laughs> toothpick arms and legs, so. Well, a lot of communities have like a spring cleanup type thing, and you, you, you're right, I mean, and there's tires down by river waterways. Mm -hmm. You find the strangest things and it's very important uh, to not only for the visual to clean up the area, but it helps the waterways. And that's really, that's your profession when you're not helping with this, you're with the city of Rochester working on storm water issues. Correct. And so there's a real eco uh, ecological benefit. There are so many benefits, like they said, you know, it makes the city beautiful. Um, and when people see litter, they're more likely to litter because it looks like people don't care. So a clean community prevents littering. So it's kind of getting started on the right foot after the snow melts, getting it cleaned up. But as you mentioned, by removing this litter from the environment, we're helping to protect the environment and protecting the waterways. And it also engages the community. They, you know, neighbors come together, families come together. They get out, they pick up their neighborhood. They have fun outside. It builds a sense of place. We hear about people that walk the same stretch 
of, of road day in and day out and they always carry a litter bag with them. It's not just during a litter bit better that they pick it up. They do it throughout the year and they have that strong tie to that location. I didn't have that good feeling when I was a kid. It was just my dad giving me a bag and he called it policing the area. <laughs> He was in the service and we'd have to go march up and down, but it's the same concept. I look back fondly on those <laughs> memories now, you know. Hey, um, you also, you were talking about promoting the event. You have a contest we do. Every, for young people. So in the fall of the year prior, we have a poster contest for fourth graders in Rochester. And they have the opportunity to submit artwork and be entered into that drawing and they win all sorts of good things. They get to walk in the Rochester Fest Parade. They get a little bit better t-shirt. Uh, the grand prize winner gets a pizza party that's delivered by the mayor. And then the, the teacher of that classroom gets a gift certificate to Office Max to buy something for the classroom for the students. Oh, and a winner here. Yes, so our, our winner this year was Erica Cowell. Um, she did a very clever poster of you know wanted litter bugs. And it's, it's amazing the artwork that comes out of these classes. We're speaking to uh, Megan Moeller of the City of Rochester, stormwater educator, and we're talking about a litter bit better campaign. Is that term used all over the country? Is that kind of, or is that a Rochester? It's a thing? Rochester term. They came up with it a few years ago, and they okay. were getting that program started. And and the cool thing now is is it has a name, it has a logo that people recognize, and they look forward to getting out there every April and and partaking in the event. One thing you were telling me is those we were talking beforehand and it, when you talk about runoff we hear it a lot about farmers and agriculture and that concern with water pollution that some of the nutrients get lost and so farmers have practices where they try to keep uh, the soil on their land and w with the city they have different uh, problems or issues uh, but it's the same overall uh, problem to keep the, the water uh, clean. That's right. Before development, water would soak into the ground. It wasn't going to run off the landscape. But now that we've developed our landscapes to have hard surfaces or, you know, when you get into farm fields where you want to have wet fields where they try to get that water off of it through drain tile. But in, in cities with the hard surfaces, that water can't soak into the ground. So it's just going to run off through the storm sewer systems you know, like they're designed but they're gonna pick up pollutants along the way. So drippings from cars, salt that we put down to make roadways and walkways safe, fertilizers, animal waste, all that stuff is gonna get picked up and carried to our surface waters. And it causes a big problem for the water quality um, in our surface waters around the state. Are there still uh, openings for your event? There are absolutely are. Registration opens on March 1st. Okay. And people can go to ourneighbors.org to, to sign up for it and we have, it's a big city and we cover a lot of ground but there's always places for people to pick up. So even that week of the event, we get people calling in. Our wanting neighbors. Wanting to know, our neighbors, letter R neighbors. Oh, the letter R, that's yeah. good, important. And uh, we've got about a minute left. How did you learn how to do all this about water science and everything? What was your education like? How did you become interested? Well, I was always kind of a little science nerd growing up and then I, I have an undergraduate in biology and then after teaching at environmental learning centers around the country for a few years, I decided to get some more education, so I have a master's in environmental education. Wow, and then there's a city government you have to learn about too, navigating. That was definitely a different world sure. for me from my, my background, but it's been a fun experience to get to know the inner workings of government like that, but then also branch out with my education. Before it was primarily youth that I worked with, and now I get to work with youth and adults and businesses um, within that local government setting. So it's been a lot of fun. And fun to see the results, I'm yeah, sure. Absolutely. A lot of times I would guess in your line of work, you know, you don't know if what you're researching is making a difference, but here you can see right, it. Right, because we end with a trash mountain at where we weigh <laughs> in all of the trash that was collected, and it really is just a big pile of trash. Um, and it's pretty astounding what, what volunteers can do, and just a little bit of effort. Most people, it only takes an hour or two that they're out, and together we make a really big difference. Great. Well, thanks, Megan. Thanks Moeller for having for me. Coming in today, stormwater educator Megan Moeller from the city of Rochester. The Rochester Neighborhood Resource Center is a nonprofit organization that provides tools to help sustain and grow active neighborhood associations in Rochester, Minnesota. 
On Cue is a production of KSMQ Television in Austin, nonprofit public television. Thank you.